Hello. Last time in the video I introduced holonomic constraints and I also talked about a specific example of two particles connected by a rigid rod. Okay. And we looked at the virtual work in that case. Just to remind you, we found that the virtual work done by that system was zero. But individual forces acting on each of the particles. Okay, so if you take particle number one and you look at the uh, forces which are acting on it due to constraint, and if you find out the virtual work, it is not zero. Okay, only for the entire system it turned out to, to be zero. And that's generically true for uh, constraint forces. It's not that the work done by the forces acting on individual particles is zero. It is only when you consider all the particles of the system and look at all the constraints, then all the, and, and you add up the work done uh, by these forces on each particle and you sum them up, that is zero, okay? So that's what, uh, one thing which should, we should remember and that's what we are going to utilize today. Now goal for today's lecture is to write down the principle which is uh, called D'Alembert principle. This will be our starting point for writing down equations of motion later. Okay, so that's what we are going to do and the task is quite simple here and the, the principle is very nice and simple. So let's uh, begin with that. So imagine we have a system of n particles. Okay, so a lot of uh, particles and each particle is experiencing some forces due to constraint and also forces which are not due to constraint. Okay, so I divide all the forces on each particle in two sets, F primes and Fs, okay? Primes with are due to constraint and Fs uh, without primes are not due to constraint, okay? And then just, just now I told you that if I take the virtual work done by all of these forces, F primes, and you add all these virtual works, then it will turn out to be zero. And that's what we are going to utilize in writing down um, the Lambert principle. So here we are. So I'm looking at a system of n particles, okay, uh, each of mass m i, and where i runs from one to n. There are number of particles. I'm writing down small m right now, okay? And then there are forces of constraint that are given by the equations, okay? The, the holonomic constraints. So let's say there are k number of constraints. So phi 1, phi 2, so and so forth to phi k. And these being equal to zero are, are the equations of constraints. So that's what I'm imagining right now. Let me write down. There are forces of, no, not, not of, let's say, there are forces that are acting on the particle that are acting on each of the particles Okay, and as I said, I will divide them into two categories. One is F prime. Okay, so particle number I has a force F I prime acting on it. And this F I prime is due to constraints. And this is the sum of all co constraint forces. Okay, if there are several forces which are acting due to constraint, I add them all of, uh, all of them. And that's what F prime is. And the another uh, set is F. And this is also the sum of all forces other than the constraint forces, okay, on particle number i. Okay. Now, each of the particle is going to evolve in time according to Newton's, Newton's second law, okay. So if I write down mass into acceleration, okay, I have a double dot here. And that will be the sum of F prime and F, F prime I plus F 
i right that's correct now you see um, we are not very happy and excited about this equation this is true this equation is true but it's not very nice because because you see on the right hand side you have f prime so you need to know what the force of constraint is in order to solve this equation and tell what the trajectory of the particle is but now you may not necessarily know what are the forces of constraint acting right let's say um, let, let's take an example to understand this let's imagine that you have one surface okay let, let's say a flat surface and you have a particle which is constrained to remain on that surface and on the top of it you have certain very massive particles okay which very strongly exert forces on this guy so let's say you have a surface a particle on it and then there are other other particles here and there which are very massive and they are all moving around because they are all interacting with each other this guy will also move around because it is getting um, forces from all other particles but this one has to remain on the on the on the surface now it may naively appear that i can plug all this and in this equation a newton second law which i have written down here okay and and solve it but the problem is the force which the surface is going to exert on the particle here okay so let's say this is the do i have a sheet here yes okay let's say this is your surface okay and your particle is going to be here on this now if the particles which are at other places okay the mass very massive ones if they are exerting a very strong force downwards okay let's say force is very very strong then for the particle on the surface to remain on the surface the surface has to push it strongly upwards but if let's say these particles move away in time okay they they go further away so that the pull of these particles on on the guy here is lesser much smaller let's say then the reaction force by the surface will also be much smaller okay meaning f prime will be smaller in magnitude so the forces f primes are not known a priori they they evolve as um, the system evolves okay and that is why this equation though correct it's not very useful in solving um, solving your problem unless you could write down explicitly what f i primes are okay so that's the that's the difficulty we face with uh, this um, where the equations of motion are written down right now in front of us and that is what the situation is uh, and that's what we want to address uh, in the remaining of the of the lecture okay so let's see what we can do about this what i'll do is i'll take the fi the forces which are other than the constraint forces to the left hand side and let's see what we get m i r i double dot minus f i equals f i prime okay i wish i had written it more neatly but um okay let me just equals f i prime okay trivial now what i do is i take my system and do virtual displacements that are cons consistent with the forces of constraint at the time okay so let me do virtual displacements and dot both the left and right hand sides with virtual displacements okay this might already uh, ring a bell to you now as i said few minutes ago that the right hand side is not zero that the virtual work done by each uh, uh one uh, virtual work done on each particle by this force of constraint is not necessarily zero you have seen this explicitly in the case of two particles which are rigidly attached 
but if i sum over the entire system okay then this is true and that's why i'll sum over all the particles i equals 1 2 n okay now this is true that the virtual work done is zero and this is what is d'alembert's principle okay it says that if i sum over all the particles i'm just writing down the equation again m i r i double dot minus f i dotted with the virtual displacements this is equal to zero okay let me put it in a box now you might have already realized that this is a nice equation because your f primes are gone now they are not here in the uh, the problem now this is the lambert principle okay okay pay attention to this let's see what it is saying it's saying that um, mri mi ri double dot minus fi dotted with delta ri is zero now imagine for a moment that there were no forces of constraint if that wa what the was the case then all the delta ris the virtual displacements of each of the particle you could have chosen them all independently of each other right they will be all independent of each other see the delta ris are constrained because of the constraint equations you remember some time back we wrote down d phi and then we wrote down d phi which was term in terms of delta ris and that was the equation of const uh, that was the constraint that virtual displacements had to satisfy let, let me go back let me try to see if i can find that equation yeah here for example here if you see uh, here this one you see the virtual displacements delta ri had to satisfy this equation and they were not so you you cannot independently choose one delta r, delta r1 to be this delta r2 to be to this delta r3 to be this okay they have to satisfy the constraints and that's what i'm saying here okay but imagine if your uh, system was not constrained by any constraint forces then you could choose delta ri to be independent of each other and then in that case for this sum to be zero you will conclude that whatever is written in the square brackets here mri mi ri double dot minus fi they all have to individually vanish right just because uh, delta ri is are independent of each other okay so if that was the case then you recover your newton's equations which is just uh, 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 mass times acceleration is the force and there is only one force because the constraint is gone but now because now the situation is that we have constraints but then the delta ri are not independent of each other so i cannot conclude that mi ri double dot minus fi is zero which is good that otherwise it would mean that i have made a mistake but then it also suggests that if i could write down this equation i take this equation and instead of using delta uh, instead of using ri i use the generalized coordinates which i was talking about some time back okay remember generalized coordinates are all independent of each other now if i could write down this relation using generalized coordinates then the delta r i's will get replaced by delta q i's and because they are independent of each other the displacements delta q i's could be taken independently of each other and then whatever would be left in the square bracket here not square this is a round bracket here this is a round bracket okay this one, this bracket is called round bracket okay that i would be able to say that that part is zero just like uh, i was saying here for the case of a system in which there are no no forces of constraint and that would give me my equations of motion without the forces of constraint and that would be our achievement right and that's what we are after
writing down equations of motion without constant forces. But the price to pay would be that we will be using generalized coordinates instead of instead of Cartesian coordinates. But that's not a big price. That's 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 okay. We we are quite comfortable with using generalized coordinates. So that's the goal for uh, next video. And those equations are which we are after. They are called Euler-Lagrange equations, and that's what we are going to obtain next time. Thank you.